Hi everyone and welcome to the Say As It Is with Pete podcast series. I'm Pete, your host, and each week I will bring you some frank and honest conversations covering various topics from learning and development, friendships, funding, HR, strengths, recruitment, ESG, well-being, EDI, employability, and much, much more. So let's get this week's episode underway and say as it is. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Say As It Is with Pete, and I'm your host Peter. First of all, I do apologise for any snivels or slight coughing or a bit of a groggy throat, but I do have a bit of a cold, a mixture of cold and hay fever, so not the best, and I've been suffering the last couple of days, so I was debating whether I get someone to step in for me, um, my trusty friend Will, or do I just do this myself, so I thought, sorry, I'll do it myself, so just bear with me, okay? So, guys, thank you ever so much uh, for tuning in for another week's episode of the Say As It Is With People podcast, the frank and honest conversations around various topics. So, in this week's episode, um, I'm going to be looking at, and as you probably saw from the post, this episode is called I Quit. That's it. I'm done. I've had enough. I quit. I'm out of here. No more. Um, Don't worry, I'm not quitting anything. It's... I think I've done some episodes around career development advice and guidance, which is fantastic and it's helped quite a lot of people, which is great to know. But in this week's episode, I want to talk about how to quit your job. A little bit controversial, I know, but there's a right way and there's the wrong way. Um, And in all good intentions of the way we want to leave our jobs, I think it's best that we need to leave them in the right way. And I, I say this because I've seen it so many times. I'm a HR professional as well as an entity practitioner and everything else. And I've seen in my career, um, you know, and companies I work for, how people resign. Some people resign in the most bizarre way. Some people just up and leave and don't come back. Some people just put their keys in the drawer and then send a text message saying, I ain't coming back. And you're kind of like, hmm, okay. And I think the key thing about when you resign or you quit from your job, you do it in the most professional way ever. Now, I've seen out there on social media now you've got to you've got to think about this as social media has developed and grown over the last you know 10 20 30 years um especially with the iphones coming in since around about 2000 and they've just you know you can take videos and pictures and you have the new millennials and um the new alpha generation coming through and everything is technology 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 everything is social media and you have influencers and everything else i have seen where some people have resigned especially in America where they've where well, I think one guy resigned from a coffee shop and he took a brass band and a quartet with him and they sang his resignation um and people have done it in Walmart where they've announced their resignation and how they feel about the company over the Atanoi. Not the best. Some quirky ways to resign, but some dumbass ways to resign. And you should never resign it just to show face that you want to be that one person out there on social media that has resigned and that's going to be rememberable for resigning. Um but you need to in a professional way and yes social media does play a big part in things as people tend to record and video their resignations or if they're on a team's call or something they'll have the the phone set towards them recording them as they quit their job um, and hear the reaction of their managers or the company hr as they resign um and then they turn and just say you know always do sad as it is um and they post it on social media saying look how brave i was i resigned from my company look at the shock reaction i got from my resignation ha 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 they can't cope without me i'm calling bull yeah stop using social media to publicly announce your resignations stop it because you've got to think about this when you resign from an organization the way you the way you resign affects how you're seen and whether you come back to that organization or not, because you never know when you might come back. And it's true, you never know when you might come back. Or you never know when they might be struggling for staff and they reach out to you and say, listen, I know you worked for us before, would you be interested in coming back? Yeah, so don't burn your bridges. And also, some employers tend to see things on social media. And if you do this great big who are on social media about how you resigned and, you know, how negative your employer was and everything else, I'm not saying that, that you can't say that, but if you do this big, you know, social media stunt, um, 
you know, of your resignation, 10 to 1, it's going to come around and bite you in the ass. It will. An employer will see that and say, well, if you did that with your employer, what are you going to do with us? I really don't want to take the risk. Because if you're doing that on social media, what else are you doing on social media about your employer? And then it becomes a big hoo-ha. And then it will bite you in the ass. Yeah? So be very, very careful on how you use social media to resign. And in my opinion, top tip, best practice, don't use social media to resign. Ever. Okay? So that's my bit of advice on social media, first of all. Don't use it. No matter how amazing you think social media is to resign in the most fun, not fun and freaky, but fun, um, interesting and bizarre way to capture the world's attention. There is no point. As I say, it will come back and bite you in the ass harder than it bloody than a rock one. It will bite you in the ass. So don't do it. Now, let me, let me just go back to some 101s as well. So when we used to apply for jobs, now, you're in your current job and you're probably thinking I've had enough I've reached my two three year lifespan within my role I can't go anywhere there's no career development no progression I just want to try something else I'm done yeah then you start looking for work now a lot of people tend to hide what they're doing from their employers obviously they don't want their employees to know that they're looking and they want it to be a massive surprise when they resign because hopefully who knows what will happen maybe the employer will offer a massive pay rise or different benefits and opportunities and you stay who knows um but anyway in a whimsical world you never know it does happen from time to time but not always um but a lot of people are currently looking for work whether you want to admit that you're looking for work or not people are people do it openly some people hide it away and they keep it quiet until they get an offer and then they resign and then it's like wow i didn't know you were looking yeah i am and i have been i've not been happy for a while so here's my notice i'm going goodbye um but obviously not like that um but people will look indirectly at, sorry so people will look incognito and some people will be open about what they're looking for and there'll be those discussions around the office you know the office gossip and office chit chat like oh you know have you heard Pete's looking for another job he's not happy oh really why I don't know you know I can't believe he's thinking of going uh well look people do it so no shit Sherlock it happens we've all got to be aware of it and as employers if you don't know that's happening between your staff hello wake up because employees do get um tired and they do get burnt out and they do get uh, to the point in their career where they probably think that actually i've exhausted all career avenues within this organization there's nowhere else i can go i'm not going to get a pay rise they've frozen pay increases there's nowhere for me to go i can't do anything else i'm done i'm out or you're putting too much pressure and you're not bringing on extra staff to support, you've pushed them to their limit, they're at breaking point, something happens, that's it, they're done, they're not They're not going to engage with you, they've made that decision, they're going to go. So as employers, you need to make sure you have a really supportive working environment, and you have those regular chats with your employees, make sure they're happy. You, you, obviously, you can't keep every employee, but a happy well-being culture, and an open door, I say open door policy, but a, open discussions around jobs and opportunities and things should be there and where possible you know recruit internally before externally so for example i'm looking for some trainers to join my team so i'm going to advertise internally first to see what i get and if nothing then i'll go externally a little bit of cost cutting there a little bit of saving um but who knows internal succession planning right but as i say we tend to hide nowadays that we're looking for work and some millennials and some not millennials but some gen uh, z and everything else tend to make it too obvious they're looking for work um so when we used to look for work surprisingly enough i don't remember it there used to be job adverts in newspapers yes actual physical newspapers people um and for those that remember, uh, I remember we used to get every Thursday through the door in my parents, the Informer, which is a local newspaper and was a local newspaper for most areas. It's one of the biggest distributors in London, I think. And, you know, it used to be or the Middlesex Chronicle used to be another one that I remember. And in there, there used to be a whole big job section where employees would advertise their jobs and you were either told to call or post your CV or even email your CV to a certain email address and they would think it back to you um, or you could call someone about the job have a chat with them and arrange for an interview um or it would say please 
post your CV. Yes, post your CV. Print your CV, stick it in an envelope, write an address on it, stick a stamp on it with a covering letter obviously inside and post it to the employer. Obviously, that doesn't happen anymore because, you know, newspapers have all kind of moved online. Um, job boards within newspapers are very rare nowadays. I know there's still some there, but they're very rare. Um, nobody really posts their CV in the uh, Royal Mail delivery system anymore um, because we've moved on. So then there is DWP. So Department of Work and Pensions or the Job Centre, where you used to be able to go, there used to be big display boards with different jobs on, and there used to be a phone in DWP, and you used to be able to pick up the phone, call the employer, and book an interview. Perfect, right? That doesn't really exist anymore, because it's all moved online, and you have to apply for a job. Then there used to be, if you remember them, the walking career uh, shops, which was a shop front for a recruitment agency like Reed, um, and other, you know, temp and full-time agencies where you used to walk in they used to be, it used to be like going in and booking a holiday but it was just recruitment you know, recruitment advisors you go in you'd see a recruitment advisor or you'd see the jobs posted in the window go in have a chat with them register with them look for temp work full-time work then arrange interviews for you give you advice uh, or tell you no we think we're overqualified you're not suitable for that job maybe you go see tracy and tracy's got something else for you um but I don't know why I'm doing impressions this week. But anyway, you're you sort of walk into a shop front recruitment store, as I would call it, and be able to sit with recruiters in the high street and find work. Because local employers will go to them, advertise their jobs and off you go. But then that's died down. So you used to have like a Reed. I remember Reed used to be on the high street quite a lot. Now Reed is just an office somewhere, very rarely above shops now where they have offices and they just call employers and then call candidates because everything's moved online there's no more shop front recruitment agencies there may be some uh, small agencies for different roles whether it be construction engineering hospitality maybe in some side alley side road where they're recruiting for positions and you could still walk in and get a job um, but those kind of agency or recruitment agencies have died out and everything's gone online so it's very rare that you see a shop front recruitment organization anymore so they've disappeared and everything with technology has moved online so you've now got online jobs boards so you've got so read um you know have moved online you've got indeed you've got like blue arrow i remember blue arrow used to be one so most of the recruitment agencies have moved online they're posting their jobs you can you know upload your cvs and everything is done online um so that's a big thing as well and a lot for personally which i use and i know everybody else uses is linkedin it's a great way to connect um and build your networks but it's also there is linkedin jobs so this is where you can see all what employers are posting for uh, vacancies they're looking to fill within their organization um so happy days so most of it is now done on linkedin and everything now is done online it's not you know print your cv send it by post send it via email it's actually upload your cv fill out an online application and hope for the best yeah so that's why keeping your linkedin profile up to date and current is always important uh, make sure your cv is up to date and important but also make sure your career history and everything else is there um, and make sure you have all the skill sets and everything else. It gets so complicated nowadays. It's just unreal. Finding a job is not easy. People think it's easy, but it's not because we as employers make it far too friggin' difficult for people. And these algorithms and everything else make it too much of a challenge. And we'll do another episode on that, I promise, um, to help both employer and employee or potential employee um, or, you know, uh, you know, job seeker find the job and beat those algorithms. But anyway... It's all moved online. So LinkedIn is a great thing. And LinkedIn, there's two ways to look for a job. You can either go directly to jobs and then look for the jobs available before you're looking for. But there's also ways you can update your profile. So you can set your uh, profile frame to show that you're open to work. Now, this comes in two ways. So be very careful. One way you can do it is that you can show the badge that you're open to uh, new opportunities uh, to recruiters only. So recruiters can see you're looking and only recruiters can see you looking, nobody else can, so you kind of the incognito part. But also, there's the public view, so you can openly announce that you're looking for work publicly, and it goes on your network. So whoever's in your network, whether that be your current employer, uh, your line manager, whoever, they're gonna see it, yeah? Be warned. 
okay? If you publicly post on your social media network that you are open to new opportunities, be prepared for the questioning of your life because everybody's going to see it. You're going to have colleagues that follow you that see it. You're going to have your boss that's going to see it. You're going to have anybody within the organization that's going to see it. Even HR might see it. Now, listen, there is nothing wrong with you doing that. You're openly showing that you're looking for new opportunities and you are just seeing what's out there. You may be doing it to see actually what your worth is. Um, And sometimes that's worth doing to actually just put the feeler out there, see if anybody's sniffing, if anyone's interested, if you've still got what it what it takes yeah so there's nothing wrong with exploring and looking um obviously there is a problem when you take the opportunity because then you have to resign right but if you're just exploring and looking there's nothing wrong with that and an employer cannot ask you to take down that post or change your setting to show that you are not actively looking for work and that you are happy in your role they can't do that it's your profile your prerogative your decision it just tells the employer that you may need to sit down with that employee and have a conversation about why they're looking yeah have that open and honest frank conversation of okay so i can see you've openly put that you're looking for work but why are you looking for work what seems to be the problem and take it from there yeah, and have that exploratory conversation with them. Um, and you may find that it may be money related, it may be just career opportunities, they feel that they've exceeded everything they can give you as an organization, they're looking for a new challenge and a new career. It might be that they've, you know, you've got something that might actually interest them what they're looking for. They might say, well, actually, I want to work in HR, I don't want to work in, you know, operations anymore. So they go, well, actually, why don't you spend two or three days supporting HR a week then and let's make that adjustment and everything else and then you never know. They might still do that, but you've still got to be on the on the mindset that if you are able to work something out with that individual and able to keep them and support them in doing some other bits within the organization, you've got to think how, you know, A, you've got to make sure you fully support that and, and go on what you say as an employer. But just be mindful that that employee may still be looking and still may leave. So you've got to bring in your power to try and keep them, but you, you, you've got no say over and you can't control that everybody stays. Yeah, unless you microchip them and tie them to the desks and never let them out again, but that's technically prison, right? So you don't want to be doing that. But if an employee is actively looking on LinkedIn and you see they're actively looking, just have a conversation with them. Have a frank and honest conversation from either HR perspective or even better, if you're the line manager and you see it, talk to them get to know what's wrong and see what you can do within your your remit to support that and speak to the powers that be to to see if you can do anything different okay you might be able to salvage it you might not but again it's everybody's individual prerogative and right to look for work and see what is out there so don't be forceful and don't tell them to take down their post just have that conversation so great that's my bit of advice on that one now when you are looking for work you you know you're looking for work whether you're open um you know people asking you questions about it uh people have headhunted you approached you whatever it may be and you go for the interview you have a successful interview and then you offer the job at what point do you resign do you resign at the point of being called and said hi there pete just to let you know you've got the job can you start yeah what's your notice period again one month so i could start around about this day okay perfect we'll send all the paperwork to you welcome to the team all you need to do is just sign your contract and send it back to us okay now at that point i'm gonna ask you the question answer it in your advice would you would you then have put your notice in yes or no no i wouldn't put my notice in just yet so if you go for a job interview and you are given and you have that conversation it goes really well you get a call saying yes or an email saying yep congratulations we want to welcome you to the company you've got the job uh, your plan start date will be this day perfect what you want to then do is make sure you get the before you sit and write your resignation and before you sit and resign from your organization that you currently work for make sure you do the following make sure that you get your contract and terms conditions from your new employer or your new prospective employer make sure you have all those documents before you start writing your resignation okay and i'll tell you why in a minute but you've got to make sure that you look at everything take your time to make sure you've read everything 
don't put your notice in until you've got your contract and until you've read all your terms and conditions. Now, the reason why I say that is because um, I've known it with some employers before um, where employers are very, very cheeky. They may, you may have gone for an interview and they've offered you 40,000 a year, perfect salary, 40 grand a year to do your job. But when you get your contract, it says that it's 30. And you think, hang on a minute, that's 30, I'm actually just being 40. And you then give them a call and say, hi there, just have a chat with you. I've got the, my contracts, I'm just looking, and it says that my salary is 30,000, but actually I thought it was 40. And then they say to you, oh, actually, the hiring manager has actually uh, decided now that um, we think the salary uh, is a little bit too ambiguous. So what we're going to do is we're going to put you on 30, and then after your probation, we'll review it um, to see if you're worth the 40. Uh, no, that's not part of the job advert that was put in there. There's no conditions set in the job advert. There was no conditions set within the interview. We agreed the salary at the interview. Now you're changing the salary. Well, that's what the hiring managers decided. Well, on that basis, no thank you. I'm, I'm not accepting. It's either 40 or nothing. So, no. Thank you for wasting my time, but no thank you. So, check it, because the hours might be different. They may have offered you 40 hours, but they've only offered you 30 hours. Um, you know, th there may be set terms that you've, you're have you expecting to see that you don't see, because they've not put them in there. So, um, you've got to make sure that if you spoke about bonuses and packages and other things in the, in your, in your uh, you know, interview, and that's what you've agreed, make sure they're all there. Because what some people do is they get so excited and the enthusiasm there and they're like, yeah, yeah, I've got the job, I've got the job, I'm going to resign. They resign and they get their contract and they look at their contract and go, oh, hang on a minute, this is not what we agreed. And then you start challenging it. So I would say, as soon as you get the job offer, just say, perfect, no worries. Once I receive all of the contracts and conditions, I'll take a look and then I'll accept it. And then I'll accept it via return signatures of the documentation. Perfect. Done. Get all the documentation. Make sure you read your contract fully, and your terms and conditions. Make sure, obviously, you're not going to read the employee handbook, obviously, because it's, I mean, employee handbooks are massive. But make sure you read all of the contract and you fully understand it. And if you have any questions, then call back HR or email the person back at HR with your questions and queries before you sign the document but also before you put your, your notice in. Because if, as I say, if the salary expectation is not the same and they've moved the goalposts, but you've already resigned, it may be harder to attract your notice. Yeah? So don't resign until you have seen your complete offer. Because a lot of people jump too soon and then realise, actually, I didn't read the terms and conditions properly. But you've signed it, but I didn't read it. Why didn't you read it? So just make sure you read everything thoroughly. And that's a good thing to do. And that's my best top tip. Never resign until you've got your contract or your offer of employment in front of you and that you've got everything confirmed. Yeah? Yeah? Because as I say, the goalpost could have changed, the salary may have changed, the terms may be wrong, you know, everything else. So always make sure you review it beforehand. And this is a warning now to the new employer who has recruited this individual and has screwed up the contract. Don't move the goalposts. If you're advertising a vacancy for 40000 with all these wonderful benefits and packages, do it. Don't bait somebody into an organisation with a, with a really good salary and go, well, actually, we're changing it now. We're actually going to give you 30. You need to prove to us you're worth the 40. And then we'll do it after probation. And then probation comes, you know, actually, we're going to extend your probation slightly. But also, we don't think you're ready at that salary yet. We'll review it in six months. That person is going to be so pissed off with you, so annoyed that they're going to leave. And trust me, they would. I would bloody well leave if you did that to me. So as employees, whatever you're offering, offer it. Be transparent, but also know that that employee is going to read those terms and conditions. Now, another warning to the new employers. If someone comes back and says, actually, can I query this, 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 and this in my terms, conditions, and contract? If HR then comes to the hiring manager, to you as hiring manager and say, well, actually, you know, Pete, um, he started to question these terms, conditions, and contracts. And you go, oh, I think he's going to be a problem then. Uh, I don't think I'm going to want him in my team. Uh, let's retract the offer. No, don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you do that, you're a freaking idiot. 
every new employee or potential employee has the right to question their contract and ask questions around it. And if you're going to get really defensive and pissed off because they're questioning what you're offering them, then you're the idiot. So I have to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to be honest, you're the idiot. As I remind you, you're the idiot if you don't think someone's going to question what you're offering them isn't what you've offered them, right? So if that person is checking, that to me shows that that person is paying attention, they want the job, they're really keen, they're making sure everything's there. And you know, they're going to be a valid member of the team because they're always going to be checking things. They're always going to be asking questions because when it comes to training, oh my God, I've done training before and people just sit there and don't ask any questions and you say, are you okay, do you understand? Uh-huh. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Do you want to ask me anything? No. I think I understand. Okay, well, I'll leave it to you. And then 10 minutes later, um, you know that thing you showed me? Can you show me again? I asked you. Did you have any questions? Did you understand? And you said, yeah. Um, yeah, well, can you show me again? Because I didn't understand it. Yeah. Were you paying attention? Not really. So, yeah. So, if they're going to ask questions and challenge the offer, let them. It's a good sign. It doesn't mean that that employee is going to be a difficult employee in the long run. It just means that you're getting someone good. Yeah? But if there's obviously other red flags that come up with them, then fine. But if they're questioning and asking questions about it and they want to clarify and understand something, they've got every right to do so. It's their right. Do not not employ them because they're questioning their terms, conditions, and contracts, and you think they're going to be a problem. They're not. Okay? Now, what that individual was doing, and as you know, I'm a strength scope practitioner, so I've been looking at this, but what you'll find is that individual is using their significant strengths, and they're pulling upon their 24 strengths. So, when they're going through their contracts and everything, and the terms and conditions, they're being strategically mindfulness, they're doing, they're looking at their detail orientations, they're pulling on that strength, they're pulling on their critical thinking strength, and they're also pulling on their common sense strengths. Okay, so there are the four strengths that they may be pulling upon um, to when they're they're looking at the information you've given them and the and the job offer, but also they're using their emotional strengths. So they are probably looking at their emotional control because they're excited, they're like really angry because you've not put in what you should have done, or are a little bit confused. Um, you know, they're using their courage strength, and the courage strength basically means they're standing up for what they believe in and what's right, and they're saying, well, actually, hang on a minute. I, you said this, now you're saying this, this ain't right. So they're pulling upon their current strength. Also, it's about their self-confidence because they're challenging and asking, but also they've got some resilience in pushing back and pushing, not pushing back all the time, but keep challenging and keeping on it. So if, they, if they've emailed you and you've not responded within, say, 48 hours, of course they're going to come back to you and say, listen, I'm really keen to take this, I really want to put my notice in, but I won't put my notice in until this is confirmed. Could you please tell me? And they're going to be resilient. And that's the point, yeah? It's not that they're being difficult. It's that they're keen. They want to get it sorted. They want the job. But they want to make sure that what you've promised them they're going to get for them to come over. Because if you can't and you've started to rescind and amend and, you know, adjust the original offer, of course they're going to say no. Yeah? Think about it. Wake up and smell the coffee, people. I've seen I've seen companies do it, where they offer an amazing package, and then when the person gets it, they're like, actually, this is not what you offered. And sometimes I've sat there and gone, but we didn't offer that. Oh, yeah, well, I've changed my mind. This is what I'm going to offer them instead. Um, okay. They're not going to come and work for us. Yeah, 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 they will, they will. They will. They're king, they're king, they'll do it. Then we find out, nope. Or they've signed the contract to say they're coming. And guess what, folks? Day one comes. They should be there at nine. They ain't coming. They ain't picking up their phone. They ain't responding to their emails. Yeah, no shit. So, yes, whatever you offer, offer it. Don't rescind it. Don't change it. And if you are thinking of changing the conditions that you and you have offered, you should have that conversation with them and say, listen, I know we looked at this, but actually it slightly changes. This is what we're now going to be looking at offering just due to business needs or demands. Are you still interested? If they say, well, actually, no. I won't be go okay well I'm, I'm really sorry but you know if it does change or it goes back to what it originally was we'll, we'll let you know so put that out there be honest open transparent honest that's all we're asking for you to do now 
hopefully the employer has put everything they should be doing they've offered you everything the potential new employee has been sent all the contracts or you've been sent all the contracts terms conditions you've read them you're happy with them and you sign them now comes the part to resign so you've, you've signed everything you've sent off your onboarding so your id and everything has gone to the new employer they're now dealing with that you're now waiting for your for for your uh for your start date soon when well, you already got your start date so now is the time to start counting down to when you leave but what you need to do is resign right now this is the fun part when you've looked at all your terms conditions and you're happy of everything and everything is there what you should have expected and you and you're happy of everything you don't have any questions or queries for the new for your new employer and you send everything back then resign at that point you resign you do not resign at the moment that the the new employee calls you and goes guess what you got the job great i'm gonna resign today and you resign no as i say wait till you get everything wait till you get your offer wait till you've seen your contract your terms conditions make sure you're happy then resign okay so once you've done that you've signed everything you're happy with everything, you then resign now what i will say to you first of all and this is the golden rule and i should have said this at the beginning but this is the golden rule when you look for a job okay and this is before you sign any contracts and before you go for any interview and this is the key fundamental thing i forgot to mention right at the beginning is always clarify your notice period because your notice period is the biggest thing here when you go to resign you have to follow the guidance of your notice period so some employers will give you only a month's notice yeah or, or say in your terms conditions your, your um you know you, your notice period is a month yeah so you have four weeks notice perfect but be careful because it depends upon what you sign now most people sign their contracts and don't even read them that's why i keep saying to people read your contracts read your terms conditions of employment before you sign anything so you know what you're getting into it's an agreement okay because it can bite you in the ass so for example when i used to work in uh, teaching education i would sign a, a, a teaching contract that would say that my notice period regardless was three months because that would give them enough time for me to do a handover and for them to find a replacement so it's three months notice so if i was looking for another job and i found another job I have to tell the and they say oh so what's your notice period I'll be going oh it's three months so I can't start for three months and they're like oh okay great no worries then we know yeah sometimes it's a month luckily my contract for example is a month but I'm not lucky enough because um, there's another caveat you have to be aware of and it's in your terms conditions with some with some people that work with organizations um, they tend to leave an organization with under four year service and they leave within the four year service to explore other opportunities new challenges pick up a new career because they because really once you hit five years service and more um, in some contracts you have to provide an additional one week's notice on top of your standard one month notice so what that means is that, for example i've worked for my company for seven years now going to eight so instead of me having a four weeks notice i've got a six weeks notice now i'm coming into my eighth year once i hit the eight year mark i then have to give a uh, eight week notice so five um so I've done four, five, six, seven. So yeah, four. Uh, four weeks is a five, and then year six, year seven, year eight. So five, six, seven, eight years. So I have to give eight weeks notice. So instead of seven weeks notice, six to seven weeks notice, I may have to give a seven to eight weeks notice. Let's run it up like that. So then it becomes not a month, but it becomes a two months notice. And obviously there is a limit to how many weeks additional you can add so be very mindful just check your terms and conditions because if you said to your employer oh actually only I, I only have to give a month and i've worked for the employer for six years oh actually i'm going to have to give them you know at least five weeks notice not the standard four weeks so i might have to go back to the new employer and say actually i got it wrong i actually need to give them five weeks not six uh, not four so when you go for interviews and stuff like that just be mindful of what your notice period is yeah just double check please double check because uh, sometimes it, it yeah, the job offer depends upon your notice period sometimes so just be careful of that but employers who are recruiting somebody if it is the notice period is a little bit longer and you really want that person you can you can cope 
you're going to cope four weeks without them you can cope an extra one or two weeks it's okay don't worry because they're going to be that hidden gem and that hidden talent you needed um so yeah so just as a person that's looking for work just be very mindful of your notice period because it will affect your resignation because you could resign and say i'm only giving four weeks notice and they come back to you in hr and go actually you've been here seven years so you actually need to get need to give us you know six weeks notice and you're kind of like uh six weeks uh, no I'm not giving you six weeks, it's four weeks. Mm -mm. Read your terms and conditions. So just be mindful, okay? So now you've, as I say, we've got everything, you're ready to resign. You know what your notice actual notice period is, so now there's the time to resign. Now there's different ways to resign. I said this before, don't do it the social media way. Bad way to do it via social media. So in the old days when we used to go to the office, um, before hybrid working um, and before the lovely COVID, we all used to be able to go into the office and then resign. I'm not saying let's go in the office and resign, but we used to be able to go into the office. You'd write your resignation letter, print it off. You'd have a conversation with your manager and you go, hi, Bob, I hope you're well. Look, I need to have a chat with you. And you sit Bob down and go, look, Bob, I'm really, really sorry. I don't want to do this, but... I'm resigning, here's my resignation. And then you would hand them the letter. Yeah. Or what some people would cheekily do then was print the letter off and stick the letter on their boss's desk and hope for the best. And then have the boss come to you and go, I got your letter. We need to have a chat. Okay, let's go for a chat. Um so I would say please don't avoid the put a letter on a desk scenario. Please don't in today's world just send an email with a heading resignation and say please see attached. So unprofessional. Quick and easy, very productive, but very unprofessional. What you should always do when you're resigning from an organization is number one, never resign on a Friday. If you resign on a Friday, it's going to piss people off because there's nothing they can do. They're going to be wound up all weekend and come Monday morning, they're going to be even more pissed because they've got to talk to you and go, you resigned, what the hell? Never resign at the end of a day. Always resign at the start of a day. Never at the end. Yeah, because it pisses people off even more. And I know that. So if you resign, ideally try and resign the first couple of days of the month. The first couple of days of the month, the first couple of days of the week, either Monday or Tuesday. Resign in the morning, get it out there, get that done. Have a meeting with your boss and say, I really need to talk to you. It's quite urgent. Can we go somewhere private? Go somewhere in a meeting room, somewhere private and say, look, I'm really, really sorry, but um, it's been a hard decision to make, but actually I'm going to be leaving the company. Here's my notice. I will send a copy of this via email to you and I'll send a copy of it to HR as well so they're aware. But I've just, you know, unfortunately made that decision to resign. That may spark up other conversations with your boss face-to-face -face in terms of the reasons why you're going, um, you know, them trying to talk you out of it um, them saying bear with me let me see what I can do what's wrong why are you leaving you know was it where you were going but you know if we could keep you what could we do to keep you things like that and those conversations then start and then who knows it, it something may come out of it something may not if not then you're going to work your notice and you're going to go um, so yes so that's the best way to do it. so if you're office based still do it the right way resign early in the week never resign at the end of the day because it just pisses people off arrange a meeting with your direct manager and um take a copy of your notice with you and hand it in and say look i'm leaving i'll, I'll send a copy of this to hr done now if you're remote uh, and you are a bit of hybrid working and you spend one day in the office and four days at home or two days in the office or whatever um again don't do the simple hi please find attached my resignation thanks don't do that via email. So unprofessional. Um, what you should do is arrange to book some time in your manager's diary and say, listen, I really need to have a chat with you. It's going to be a quick 10, 15 minute Teams call. I really urgently need to speak to you. And we go, okay. If not Teams, let's book a phone call. Call me at nine o'clock. Let's have the conversation. Speak to them and say, look, I really hate to do this, but it's taken a lot of time and consideration, but unfortunately I'm going to be leaving the organization. I am in the process now of emailing you my resignation and I will CC in HR, but that's the decision I've made. Again, conversations will come from that. Yeah, and that's the correct way to do it. Don't do those emails and don't just stick letters on people's desks because you're trying to avoid that ultimate conversation about why you're resigning, 
but guess what? You're going to have that conversation anyway. So I don't see why you think you're going to avoid that conversation. And they're just going to accept it and go, oh, OK, well, fine. Pete's leaving. There we are. Done. Um, yeah, got your notice. Thanks, mate. So you finish on that date. All right. No worries. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, we're going to start looking for your position now. No. Best thing to do is just do it the right way. Have that conversation with your manager. Give your letter in. And then copy in HR and say, following and then from either that face to face or that um, phone call or that Teams meeting, just email your manager, copying HR, saying, Look, you know, as you know, following our conversation today, please don't attach my resignation. I say that we'll be leaving the organization. All the relevant information and my leave date is in the letter attached. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. But um, again, thank you for. Uh, allow me to work for your organization i'll start putting your hand up together um and i'm sure we will catch up um during the week and if you have any questions do reach out and let me know now I say hand over i'll tell you what i mean by that in a minute but do it in a professional way don't burn your bridges when you when you write your resignation letter there are some key things you need to put in your resignation letter so make sure that your resignation letter is well structured um, be polite at all times. Thank the organisation for uh, working for them um, and the training and, and commitment and stuff they put in you. If there are things that are negative for the reasons why you're you're leaving, put it in a constructive way, not in a bitchy ass way, and don't be an ass about it. So you might. Uh, my advice is if you're going to write that, write out the letter in what you think drop it into chat gbt and ask it to make it more professional for you and then use that one yeah um best way then you're not going to burn your bridges and you're not going to piss people off what i'll also say in there as well in that letter just state your last working day as per your contracted probational period or your contract period notice so as i say if you work five years over five years and you have to give an extra week's uh, notice per year served after five years so if you're supposed to be doing four weeks notice you've been there five you need to give one more week so you give six weeks or seven weeks or eight weeks whatever it may be you pop you pop it in there you say my last date will be this day um also during this time i've accrued x amount of holidays that i've not taken this will need to be owed to me also any outstanding expenses that i will have to claim during my notice period will also need to be owed plus my p45 to follow after my final payment has been made so just be professional you know um and make sure that you've clarified everything and you put everything in there and also put in there you know i'll, I'll make sure that i am professional to the end and that i will support with any new team member coming in that i may have to train but also i'll make sure there is a comprehensive and um, clear handover given before i leave so when I say a handover, what I mean is as soon as you know you've resigned, start putting a handover together. That's the best thing for you to do and the most professional thing to do. So I remember during the pandemic, the position of um, director of recruitment was no longer needed as a bit of a restructure. So we didn't need that position anymore. So uh, I can still pick up my role as director of uh, L&D, which is perfect, but I dropped the recruitment side. So what I did, because I was director of recruitment, there was a ton of stuff that needed to to be known so what i done was i created a one notebook um and in there i created a folder i created a new notebook called recruitment handover and i put different subject headings or different page headings so it might be team job boards dwp staffing agencies staff houses because we have staff houses uh, job shows etc and all the way through then each of those sections I would have information about the employees including what would you do on onboarding all the relevant documentations all those kind of things all the contacts for certain DWPs any key dates or anything any passwords usernames logins what current budgets were set what current expenditure was done where to find certain things any projects that were being worked on anything in the pipeline all that kind of thing was there ready for a handover so when I handed over I sent the handover to the relevant people necessarily and they got that handover and that was everything they needed to know about that department for it to pick up from where it was and just run it and if anybody else came in to look after the department everything was there for them to go so do be professional create a handover yeah make sure everything is there for people yeah um maybe you say to your boss you know 
who will be taking over my duties until you find somebody and they'll say oh i need to figure that out i'll tell you who and go okay fine but still create that handover because it covers your ass when you leave and it shows you're professional because you don't want to go and go oh well, they didn't do a handover we had nothing from them and we found this out we couldn't find this and we couldn't find that and then it's a nightmare so just be professional all the way to the end do that professional handover done because on your last day you can say to your boss okay here's my handover everything is done for you everything is there perfect easy peasy lemon squeezy but just make sure that when you do resign you do it professionally you don't do it the wrong way you do it the right way because as i say it's a very small world out there remember the song it's a small world after all i can't even sing you remember the song it's a small world after all what it is because i've seen people pop up in my industry in teaching and education and especially as L and D practitioners and in apprenticeships and other things that just re-pop up I haven't seen for years and I know they they really left on bad terms in some organisations and they pop up and you remember how they left. Trust me. You remember. And you think, oh my God, really? Um, and people talk and it gets around pretty quick. So I would say just be very professional when you resign. Know when to quit. And I know that there are times where, you know, things get really bad and there's too many pressures and demands and burnout and everything else that we all go i've had enough i quit i'm done i'm not coming back one of the biggest things i would say is never leave an organization until you've got a job to go to because who's putting food on the table who's putting you know money in the bank who's going to cover your rent because universal credit claims can take up to 13 weeks still to process so who's going to pay your phone bill your netflix your disney plus who's going to pay your council tax your bills they're going to be racking up you may be able to get away for a month or two to put things on hold with certain people but after that they're going to go well you need to pay us you need to you know pay back and your debts are going to rise and everything else so just make sure that if you are living with a partner and you're very supportive and you've got enough money to for them to support and cover you for at least a month or two while you look for another job because you've had enough and you just quit with immediate effect if you're not going back i get it i do get it but make sure you're financially stable before you do that um never quit a job until you have another job to go to that's why i say just make sure before you resign before you resign get all your terms conditions all your offer letters make sure you've read them make sure you understand them make sure that everything that you've agreed with that new employer is there then sign it and send it back okay now just make sure you're that you're all going to be set and fine okay so do the right thing but some other tips i want to give you is just make sure that um you know if if you do resign from an organization and then you you accept a new offer and then that new offer gets rescinded or retracted and then you're like oh okay they, they're not gonna they've decided not to employ anybody anymore they've ceased all recruitment so they're not gonna bring you on board that kind of leaves you in limbo because you're thinking oh my god i'll go back to the employer and say okay listen the the job i was going to they've actually retracted it i don't have a job anymore i'd like to retract my notice it's not a given right or a given thing that 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 your old employer will rescind your resignation they may say to you look i'm really sorry but you know we've now decided we don't want that position anymore or actually you know we already found somebody so unfortunately not um or we worked off you saying but it's been a different position on a different salary so just be just be aware of that that it's not a given right to be able to retract your notice it's it's a it's down to the employee but it's a negotiable thing it should be negotiable and if you're an employee listening it's a negotiable thing don't forget that um using holiday as part of your notice period so if you've got two weeks holiday accrued that you've not taken yet in your holiday year and you want to take it as part of your notice it's not a given that you can use your holiday as part of your notice period some employers may not want to pay holiday as part of your final payment so they might say to you well actually yeah you know look work two weeks your notice and the other two weeks take us holiday happy days um because obviously your final payment will be your um final salary plus any of your uh, accrued holidays and any expenses and stuff that they owe you so they may not want to pay your holidays so they may ask you to take your holidays as part of your notice period um so again that's negotiable but it's not a given right um so also just make sure that if you are going to another employer and it's very identical and very similar and the jobs are very similar 
uh, or there might be a competitor to your organization you may be placed on garden leave now garden leave isn't something to say you're, you've done something wrong and you, they don't want you in the building it just means they may ask you to leave a bit sooner because you're potentially might be a risk to them and the business because you might not say you will but you might be able to provide or take information and documentation with you to that new employer or their competitor so they may ask you to go on garden leave early which means great because you can stay at home you still get paid but you'll just won't be allowed in the office um so it's fine yeah um and as i said before don't burn your bridges people because it will bite you in the ass. trust me because you never know when you might need to go back to that employer um so always be on your best behavior so it's a small world after all guys now i know that's a lot of information to take on but i think the key point for this guys is look be very careful when you're thinking about quitting your job consider every option yeah, have those conversations with your current employees before you start thinking of looking. And if you've had those conversations, you've explored options with them and there's nothing going to come out of it, then just let them know, look, oh, I will be honest, I will be looking for work. If something comes up, great. If not, there we are. But I'm just going to see what's out there. If you do open yourself up on LinkedIn and your employer sees it and they go, what are you doing? You know, you say, well, it's my right to look. I'm just having a look to see what's out there and what my worth is. That's all. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere yet. Um, you know, and an employer can't say, well, I'm going to say that as your notice. I'm going to say that as your resignation. You go, well, you you can't because it's my option to look. So they, they under employment law, they can't accept a LinkedIn post of I'm looking for new opportunities as a formal resignation. You have to formally resign. Um, and if you've done that and an employer becomes a bit difficult, then seek advice and guidance from ACAS. And I'll be honest, because of course you guys, as an employer, we should be professional all the way. So, look, don't be afraid to look for work. Have a look for it. But as I say, when you quit your job, quit it in the right way, not the wrong way. Make sure that you cover your ass every step of the way. Make sure you do not quit your job until you have another job to go to. Do not quit your job until you've read all the terms and conditions of your new job. And make sure that you're fully happy with it. Um, before you sign it and read everything it doesn't take much time to read something but read it make sure you understand it make sure you're happy with it if you have any questions with your new employer question it challenge it okay new employers if someone is challenging and questioning the terms and conditions of contracts do not think that they're going to be a problem child they're not they are a valid new employee that is going to be an asset to your organization and then questioning and querying their terms and conditions is in their right as an individual and is covered under employment law for them to check their rights because you don't want to get on the wrong side of that do we now so Listen, guys, I am uh, I'm conscious that this podcast is nearly, is nearly an hour long, um, but I hope this has provided some people with some advice and guidance about the right way to quit their job. And just don't quit for the sake of it, but quit the right way. Um, and I know quitting a job isn't great for all employers because they're losing people, but if we take the time to stop and listen and find out why our employees might be resigning or might be open to other opportunities, we might be able to retain them within the organisation, but if there is nothing we can do to retain them, we just need to be aware that we might lose a really good employee. So do everything you can to keep them, but if you can't, then you you can't you just have to be on the back foot and be aware that you may need to fill that position at some point so make sure you're prepped and ready to go you've got your job descriptions and everything and that you can look internally or potentially start earmarking people internally to replace that individual or that you are ready to start advertising as and when you need to um but hopefully it won't get that far so guys thank you very much for listening to this episode if you found it useful or you think anyone might find it useful please do share it um and again thanks for listening enjoy your week it should be a sunny week i'm hoping although it is a bank holiday monday and it is raining typical uh so enjoy your week whatever you get up to um again thank you (laughs) excuse me thank you for listening i managed to not cough so much um and remember you can always listen back to this episode uh, or wherever you get these episodes from either whether it be apple um spotify amazon uh, rss.com or wherever you get your podcasts and guys thank you for listening have a great week and i shall catch you on the next episode of say as it is with pete